My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to witness another Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to witness more Ramadans to come. Ameen. Every time Ramadan graces us with the visit, the controversy starts on why we fast and the effect of fasting on us as humans. In other words, another reason for a lot of people to question, which is not a problem, but to attack. And as we've discussed many times, It seems like unstoppable. Doubts, attacks on every aspect of our lives as Muslims that will cause us to weaken even more. But what caused the attack is our weakness. And we've discussed and we studied together قول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ينبغي للمؤمن أن يذل نفسه. The مؤمن should not be in a state of ذل, humiliation and weakness. Because once you're weak, all problems break loose. The other day on TV, well I watched a, a, a video. It was a, a talk show, an Arabic talk show where the host is saying Ramadan has absolutely no benefits to humans. As a matter of fact, it's harmful to your body. And then he went on to say, we fast because it's an order from the Master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is true. But then he injects his poison in the statement saying, but Ramadan is harmful. We know very well that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribes upon us, it's for our own benefit, not even for him or for his subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for our benefit. There are benefits in everything that we were ordered to do either gaining benefit, as we said, or pushing away harm. This is our deen. But the amount of ignorance and the amount of plotters that just want to push us more and more into weakness and doubt, to doubt our deen, <coughs> seems to be our daily life. And if we don't realize this, we're not going to be able to deal with it. So I urge you and I urge Everybody, when we study, when we want to develop ourselves, start with the problem. Ramadan is here to solve a problem, and what is our problem nowadays? It's our weakness. Our weakness, our weakness as an ummah, our weakness as a community. That's opening the door for everybody to attack. Our weakness that are subjecting our kids to a huge fitna of re-evaluating. Do I want to stay in this state of dhul and attack and humiliation? So yes, indeed, we fast from Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do so. No, no question. It's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, absolutely. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself told us there's a ghaya, there's a goal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Ya Ahal Ladina Amen, who kutiba alaykum usayam, who kama kutiba ala ladina mi publicum, la ala kum, and la ala kum here to feed al ghaya. La ala kum tatakun, so you may attain taqwa, so you may build taqwa. So there is something out of Ramadan that we need to walk out of Ramadan. A lot of people at the end of Ramadan say, Was my fasting accepted? And I think that question personally, wallahi, I think that question is wrong. If you're doing it sincerely, are you questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance? The question is, what did I benefit from Ramadan? Did I take something out of Ramadan? This is the question. 
Stop questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts your deeds or not. What did I take out of Ramadan? Why did I fast? To lose 10 pounds? You took 10 pounds out of Ramadan. Good for you. To do a khidmah one, once or twice, you did it. Good for you. But is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ There's a clear goal. But apparently it's not so clear, so we need to talk about it. And it's okay, this is why we have the Qur'an. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged us to study and learn. At-taqwa, my dear brothers and sisters, as explained, أَن تَتَّخِذَ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ مَا تَكْرَهُ وِقَايَةً At-taqwa is to build a wiqaya. A wiqaya is a shield, protection. From what? From everything that's harmful. This is what Ramadan is for. Build that taqwa. Protect yourself from everything harmful. You've been harming yourself for 11 months, then come Ramadan, you need to build that taqwa, you need to build the techniques, you need to build that shield to protect yourself from harms. What kind of harms do we impose upon ourselves outside of Ramadan? When you look at yourself as a human being, you got three dimensions. There are three dimensions for you as a human being. There's your body, and there's your soul, and there's your mind. Speaking of the body, start with the easy one. Outside of Ramadan, we severely abuse our bodies. Especially in this fast-paced life that we live. We don't eat healthy. We eat a lot of processed food. We just dump a lot of things in our body, a lot of sugars, a lot of things that are proven to be harmful to your body. We can't withstand even the smallest disease. Our bodies are becoming so weak. The rates of chronic illnesses are rising. May Allah protect all of us, cancer and what have you. Why? Because of the nutrition, because of the way we feed our body. So, if your body is weak, everything that's dependent on that body will weaken. Why are we talking about bodies now? Is it only because we want to look good? Because your body is the carrier of your soul and your mind. And if the vehicle is weak, nothing will straighten out, nothing will work. Imagine driving your car with flat tires or no tires. You're not getting anywhere. So taking care of your body is the first step for regaining your power. As an individual, before the Ummah, because if we want to empower the Ummah and fix the condition of the Ummah, we need to fix the individuals. Because the community is made of you and I and everybody in here and out there. Individually, if we're not ready, the community will not be strong. So you fix your body by abstaining from food. And there are numerous studies there's no need for us to even discuss right now numerous studies, numerous videos on the benefit of siyam for the body in healing the body, detoxifying the body. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting you through as a fault. He wants your body to be strong and ready. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars to go on a program, just fast. Go ahead and fast and fix your body and be ready for your, mesh, for your mission. Second, your soul. You said the three dimensions, the body, the soul, and the mind. Your soul. What happens to our soul throughout the 11 months? It seems, subhanAllah, that we keep drifting away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Iman, when we say soul, we definitely mean your Iman. 
your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it weakens. Your charge becomes low. Your ibadah becomes routine. Ramadan will come and will break that routine. Some of us will go down to the bare minimum of five fara'ib and that's it. Do nothing else. And we do them as a chore. We just need to get rid of them. Our relationship with Allah becomes so weak. What's the problem with that? When your soul is weak, when your iman is weak, it affects your life definitely because your decisions become different. You become weaker. Your whole, your, your whole life will become weak because your soul is weak. Come Ramadan, break the routine. Pray more. Read Quran. Stay up late. All of a sudden, and this is the disruptive change that people learn in management. Beautiful model of change. You come and you just change everything. Because you need to fix things from the ground up, from the root up. It has to be severe. It has to be disruptive. This is what Ramadan does to us. To a point where many of us, a night before Ramadan, we are shaking, we're, we're, we're worried. Am I going to be able to last without food for 17 hours? And then second day we realize, SubhanAllah, I can do it. You reach that point of fear right before Ramadan. A day before Ramadan, by midday, you have headaches and you will pass out if you don't eat. You think so low of yourself. I can't do it. So difficult. Overnight things change. You become a different person. Complete transformation. You see that step up in that obedience in Ramadan. Outside of Ramadan, inshallah all of us, we don't approach haram. We try our best not to approach haram. However, in Ramadan, you don't only quit haram, you also quit the halal. So eating outside of Ramadan is halal. Come Ramadan, you don't eat during the day. Although it's a halal action. But look at the elevation in the status. Look at the step up in the game. You don't just do what's required, you do more. These are strategies for complete transformations, my dear brothers and sisters. Right in our book, free of charge. And you're ordered by your faith to go through them. What a great religion is this. You quit the halal, you do more, you push yourself to become better. In Ramadan, you enjoy the honor of the private worship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is something that many of us don't do outside of Ramadan. Because Siyah, my dear brothers and sisters, is a private thing. How is it private and we're all here and we're all fasting? Because nobody knows if you're fasting or not except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody could cheat. But you know that you will not do that. Because it's an honorable commitment between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will keep even if you are behind closed doors. Nobody's watching you. Think of these meanings, my dear brothers and sisters. So honorable, so committed, so sincere that you keep it even when nobody is watching because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. You're getting closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these actions. In Ramadan, you are performing a very unique ibadah. Because most of the ibadat, sujood, even money, 
were ordered by tyrants upon people in history. So there were tyrants that ordered people to make sujood for them and pay money for them. Similar to uh, salah, similar to zakah. But nobody ordered any person to perform siyam. Because it's very difficult for a human being to uh, follow up on siyam and ensure that people are actually doing it. So it's a unique ibadah. So you need to feel proud. Ramadan is for you to inject you with proud and energy that you're doing something very, very special. And you know you're doing something very special. Because anybody that will look at you will say, not even a cup of water? Wow. You know you're doing something extremely special. Which is what we need to build this strong soul and this strong life. Abdullah ibn Abbas was asked about haqq al-taqwa. He was asked about that. Hey, what is Haqq al taqwa So we can learn how far can we get with developing this Iman and soul in Ramadan. He answered, أَنْ يُطَاعُ اللَّهَ فَلَا يُحْصَى وَأَنْ يُذْكَرَ فَلَا يُنْسَى وَأَنْ يُشْكَرَ فَلَا يُكْفَرَ So you want to reach Haqq al taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so you may attain taqwa and develop taqwa. The what is haqq taqwa The highest level of taqwa. So he answered, and you ta Allah fala yu'sa. Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without even a slightest disobedience. Absolute obedience. Wa yudkara fala yunsa. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every second of the day. You never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَيُشْكَرَ فَلَا يُكْفَرَ And to always be in a state of gratitude, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout your day, without feeling. Sometimes we feel some people get to a point of discouragement. and say, why? Forgetting the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you. When can we ever reach this stage outside of Ramadan? I mean, I'm sure there are that there has been awliya wa salihin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with that. But we know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, improve our iman, that we're not there. We're not there. But we would love to be there. And I know all of you would love, we all would love to be there. Here's a chance in Ramadan to reach that haqq taqwa Because in Ramadan, throughout your day, it's difficult to commit a sin. Because you continuously, you know that you're fasting and you don't want to spoil that effort. So anything happened, you would say, Allahumma inni sa'im. You don't want to spoil that. So think of it and monitor yourself. You would realize that you are in a state of obedience, inshallah, all of us. Throughout your siyam, you're in a great state of obedience. And you will not dare to spoil your siyam. During your siyam, you will always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never forget Him. Never. Why? Because if you forget Him, your stomach will remind you. You're fasting. You're fasting. You're in a state of ta'a all the time. All the time. You'll never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two out of three, almost there. The last one, a yushkara fala yukfar. Now it has to be, we have to pay attention to this one. Because if we go throughout Ramadan thinking, why am I doing this? Is this even healthy or beneficial? Blah, 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 I am tired. You're wasting the chance of reaching haqq al taqwa However, if you remember the benefits of Ramadan and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing you with Ramadan and Siyam, you'll always be saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah that I'm forced to do this. I'm forced by myself, nobody's forcing me. You're forced, you're forcing yourself. You're pushing yourself. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala written this upon me. And ordered me to do this because I'm enjoying every second of it. I'm benefiting out of it and I'm obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll always be in a state of gratitude and reach, inshallah, all of us haqq al taqwa The last point, to continue that development 
to the goal is your mind. When you have a strong body and you have a strong soul, what's going to function really well? Your mind. What's the problem with our minds? We're not crazy. Inshallah, we're not. Although this life will make any of us crazy in a second. However, the main source of weakness and failure in life is or lies in the lack of discipline and the lack of self-respect, self-worth, self and low confidence. Because a lot of us get into that negative talk, we destroy ourselves, we can't do this, we can't do this, I can't do that, I'm not ready, I'm not prepared, I don't have the money, I don't have this, I don't have that. We tend to destroy ourselves. And we tend to make wrong decisions. Our weakness is based on making wrong decisions because we cannot value our work. And we always think that the person we're dealing with or the task we're upon to conquer is much bigger and much stronger. Think of this, my dear brothers and sisters. It's a game of power. Anything you do in life, if what you're about to deal with is something that you consider very, very powerful, it will control you and you won't be able you once you become weak you won't be able to to accomplish and complete your mission if the mission is impossible tahrir al-aqsa is impossible right now why because we're weak working together as a community it's impossible right now because we're weak you need to know anything that looks impossible. It's not because it's impossible. It's because we're weak. So, our weakness is clearly resembled in the lack of self-control. We cannot control yourself, ourselves or push ourselves to do things as an individuals, or as individuals or as groups. Where do we get that strength from so we can have the strong mind to make critical decisions? They seem critical decisions. We need the strong body and we need the strong soul. Because that strong soul, you're on a journey to develop taqwa. And the Rama said, a taqwa shares a very important root with a very important word, which is our goal for this khutbah, which is al-quwwah. Al-taqwa and al-quwwah, they share the same root. So by developing taqwa, the ulama said you should develop quwwa. Al-taqwa, dear brothers and sisters, without quwwah, is taqwa naqsa. Al-taqwa, if it doesn't couple with quwwah, with power and strength, is not a complete taqwa. A taqwa should produce quwwa and al-da'af, dalil, naqs al-taqwa. And weakness proves that there's a decrease in taqwa, inversely proportioned. Because the one that just built his body for 30 days and built his soul and his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what? He knows a very important piece of information in the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ This is the end of it. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ And know with absolute who's saying وَعْلَمُوا Allah is saying it. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Know very well with absolute certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. How cannot you be powerful? How cannot you be strong? How cannot you take on the most difficult decisions in life? How cannot you see everything around you so small? Everything will diminish. There are no impossible missions anymore. There are no impossible tasks anymore. There are no big goals anymore. Everything becomes small because you know, Inna Allah ma'al 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you and you're strong and you've developed that power walking out of Ramadan. You want to know you benefit from Ramadan? Look at your strength coming out of Ramadan, your will, your decision making. You can move on with your life. You're fearless. And this is what we need as an ummah to achieve our goals. And this is inshallah what we learn from Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the power of Ramadan.